Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having an awesome weekend so far. I hope that you are all staying optimistic and staying happy. Welcome Alina. Hi Abakumova, nice to see students ready to learn right of way. Uh, and we are going to learn specifically focusing on speaking part three of the speaking section of the IELTS exam. It is the challenging detailed questions following speaking part two. We are going to be looking for that band nine result as well. Um, and uh, this is an all chat class. Everybody can join the chat. We are continuing on the topic of useful items. So we just did part two 30 minutes ago and that was about an object that you take with you when you leave home. Now, arguably, most objects we take with us when we leave our home are useful items. So it's no surprise that part three will continue with this topic, okay? Now, uh, whenever you get into part three, keep in mind the um, ideas that you came up with in part two, okay? So remember um, the topics that we came up with in part two, or the ideas? And this is another reason why it's really important to come up with more than just one idea for uh, part two. So um, another very, important reason uh, to think of at least two to three good ideas for part two is so that you have good ideas for part three. Okay, so in part two, we talked about um, taking our wallet with us. Okay, but we also had some other really good ideas uh, before we decided to talk about the wallet. Okay, all right. Now we've got lots of students joining in, which is fantastic. Um, what were some of those other uh, ideas? Um, Eugen, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for those lovely emojis. Ken, I'm happy that you made it back here as well. So. What were some of those really good ideas that our members and other students came up with for part two? What were those? You remember? I remember some of them. So I think it was Rashika that came up with the debit card. Okay. And then um, we also had the idea of taking a thermos with us. Right. And there was the eco bag by Cassandra. Okay, uh, Maria says, let's not forget about that hand sanitizer. Uh, we didn't have sunglasses, Saeed, but you know what? That's another really good one, so let's put it up there. Yeah, Tatiana, very nice. Uh, headphones. So all of these... Um, ideas will become very valuable for us when we get into these part three questions. Now, before we get into these part three questions, everyone, again, just a reminder that this class is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. In fact, if you have a moment, I highly recommend signing up, at least for the free version of the class by clicking this green button right there because we are using this website today uh, to do the speaking section and chat with students. Now, if you like this class and you want all of our practice exams and videos and lots more, then click the big red button for the premium IELTS package. Doesn't cost a lot. We're an IELTS test registration center certified agents. We're one of the most popular IELTS preparation tools in the world. Uh, so you click the join now and then use the discount code perfect, perfect, 
nine. Um, and then you get a 20% discount that we're kind of promoting in these classes and with our latest release. If you're a general IELTS student, it's gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button there. And again, um, definitely create a user account so that you can join our speaking session today. We have a speaking chat interface on the website. So that's what you're going to be using. Okay, and you need this code PERFECT9 uh, for that 20% uh, discount. Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. Lots of fun vocabulary videos uh, and other news. And again, to all of our viewers, uh, reminder, uh, no classes on Wednesdays into the future now, okay? Uh, so um, we are going to be doing classes Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and they're going to be longer classes. They're going to be 90 minute classes. So longer classes for more interaction and we will produce more HD videos. So lots of exciting uh, changes will be coming up. If you're not sure about um, some of this information, you have some questions, just send me an email, um, adrian at aehelp.com. I will answer your questions. Hello, Nurtan from Azerbaijan. All right. Um, so uh, that is the key information that you have to pay attention to. Now, let's go to part three, okay? So speaking part three continues from part two. The examiner will say, okay, your time is up. I, uh, please put the uh, questions, the note paper to the side. I will take back the questions. Now we will continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Amri, thank you for that feedback. Amri says, sir, I like that you will extend the live classes. Yeah, I think we're going to definitely give that a, a shot. I think it's the right approach. Okay, so then the examiner says, let's talk about useful possessions. And that's what we're going to do. Now, a lot of students have heard tips, strategies throughout the week about what to do for the speaking section. And now it's time to use those speaking strategies. So I'm going to get right into volunteering today, okay? I'm not going to waste any time. I want to give lots of opportunity for people to interact in this class. So to volunteer for speaking, everyone, again, you need to register an account at aehelp.com then you click uh, you log into your account your my student account and there you will see a student partner speaking option so you click on that um, enable your microphone please test it so uh, I should have put this here a long time ago but test this with other students okay so test that with other students and then when you when you know it works you're like okay it works on my phone on my uh, tablet whatever you're using then you can say all right i'm going to volunteer now and then when you're ready to volunteer uh, message me you're going to see me as master and then click on the blue envelope and write i want to volunteer now if this is confusing don't worry i will show you exactly how this works so you go to the website gialshelp.com or aehelp.com you click on either the big red button and you purchase the package or this green button for free register an account then uh, you have a my student account right there click on that if you're not already logged in and then you'll see all of our goodies computer-based practice exams uh, oh that's if you have the premium package of course you'll have um, uh, PDF exams, study plans, uh, like a hundred lesson videos, lots more, writing task one and two, and then you'll have the student partner speaking. Okay, click on that. Um, accept that you will be polite and you are responsible for your communication. There's some instructions there, you can read that after. Um, you can always book an IELTS speaking interview with me to practice your speaking. 
and then you will be redirected and you will see all of this um, kind of uh, all these people awesome people in here okay all right Ken yes glasses are extremely important for people with bad eyes or their contact lens right um, Ken is in here, Ugul Han is in here, Yozra is in here, Cristiano is in here. Now all you have to do is volunteer. You're going to see me as master. See how here it says you, master? You're going to see me like this. Uh, click on the blue envelope and then send me a message. Say, I want to volunteer and then I can connect with you and then we can practice speaking. I can give you feedback and we can help everybody learn with strategy. So lots of fun to be had, lots of valuable information to be shared. Ruptaj, uh, I believe is ready to volunteer here. So let me uh, connect with Ruptaj. Ruptaj says, I want to volunteer. Okay, Ruptaj, are you ready? I will always message you back, students, just to make sure you haven't gone for a coffee or a washroom break or something. Um, so, When you see me send you a message back, like you just write, I want to volunteer, and then I message you back, like, are you ready? Please send me a message, like, yes, I am, or sure, or let's go, or let's do this, Adrian, or ready as I'll ever be. So some sign of life and communication wherever you are in the world, and then I can call you, okay? Otherwise, if I cold call you, then I might not get an answer. Right. So right now, Ruptaj, I am waiting for you to say yes, I'm ready, or text me yes, or yup. If I don't see that come up in a few moments, then I will move on to somebody else. And again, be patient, um, students, because you never know when I ping you. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm not getting a response from. Ru oh, there's Ruptaj. Okay, now I got some response. Last second, Ruptaj. Whew. All right. I'm calling you. Make sure you have a good connection, Ruptaj. I don't recommend trying this with uh, a weak internet connection. All right, Ruptaj, not sure what's going on there, but check the system on your end. Make sure your internet connection is good enough, okay? Um, Cristiano says, I want to volunteer. Okay, Cristiano, are you ready? All right, and again, be patient, everyone. Um, we definitely make connections sooner than later, and then uh, we get right into it, okay? So be on the ready. Let's do it, Adrian. All right, Cristiano. Oh, I think we lost Cristiano, interestingly, there. I don't know what happened. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Let me try one more time. There's Cristiano. Hello, Cristiano. It seems like you picked up, but I cannot hear you. I'm not sure if um, it might be a connectivity issue because we you had a dropped call there. Um, so make sure that you have a stable internet connection. Okay. Um, test it with somebody else, Cristiano, and then come back. Okay. All right. Because I can't hear you for sure. So there's something I think on your end there. All right. Son, um, let's see if Son is ready. Son, are you ready? And I believe we've talked to Son before. Um, Son is in Taiwan, if I remember correctly, but we'll soon find out. So it should work. Um, highly recommend using a PC laptop, uh, stable Wi-Fi or LAN connection, um, of course, is ideal for these types of communications. Hi, Son. Hi, Son. Kind of uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, son. How are you? 
Uh, I'm doing great. Okay. Uh, welcome back. All right. Son, uh, may I ask, where are you? Uh, I'm in Vietnam. In Vietnam. For some reason, I thought Taiwan a second ago, but uh, you are in Vietnam. What city in Vietnam? Uh, the capital city, Hanoi. You are in Hanoi. Okay, son. Um, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, I want to apply to the university. Okay. Uh, now, here's the first tip, son, and to everybody. Uh, give details when you're speaking with the examiner. So, what uh, major or what subject are you planning to study? Um, I'm planning to study uh, IT. Okay. All right. So, son, um, for the IELTS, what you want to do always is be really expressive. So if somebody, you know, if somebody, if the examiner asks you, um, you know, why are you taking the IELTS? You should say, I'm planning to major in IT um, at a university in California. Okay. So location, specific major, the reason. So try to combine all of that because that's how you get higher band scores. All right, let me um, ask you a speaking part three question and focus on giving me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Son? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, um, here we go. So uh, let's talk about useful possessions. What are some items that people often carry with them in their pockets? Uh, I believe some uh, useful objects that individuals have with them in their pockets are their wallet, uh, their house key, uh, their phone, because these are, are uh, urgent situation, uh, just like uh, my mother when she uh, uh, my mother, the, when she saw an accident, uh, she immediately got her phone and called the ambulance. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, that, son, would be a uh, five point. Five, five, five point five. If you would have said it faster, it would be an easy six point five because your answer was pretty good. So you gave an answer, explanation, um, and uh, an example, which is a, a the right approach. That's what you want to do. And you had some good paraphrasing at the beginning. So you said, "I believe some useful objects instead of items instead of people." You said individuals. Instead of carry with them, you said have with them. Um, and those were really good. Watch your plural. So you said in their pocket. In their pockets. Uh, many people have many pockets. Okay. Um, are their wallets, their house keys, and their phones. Uh, right. Many people, many objects. So uh, use the uh, plural. Okay. Um, because these are necessary in urgent uh, situations. So yeah, urgent situations is okay. Um, I would say instead of urgent situations, I would say daily life, right? Like your phone and your keys, uh, you need those in daily life, not just urgent situations. So here, I think it would have made a bit more sense to say because these are necessary in daily life, okay? All right, um, why? Uh, so the explanation here was a little bit on the weaker side. Um, so why do we have our house keys? Why do we have our phone? Why do we have our wallet? Okay, so um, you could give a bit more explanation here. So a wallet is needed for purchases. Um, the keys are needed to secure the house and phones are needed for communication.
And then you said, just like my mother, when she saw an accident, she immediately got her phone and called the ambulance. And you can even get really creative, which helped uh, save a person's life. Okay, so finish the idea. Um, now you have a band nine, as long as you're fluent. So you have the right idea, son. It's just a matter of practice, practice. And you're doing that by coming to this live class and uh, volunteering. So very good for you, okay? All right, son, um, I'm going to uh, read this question again, give this answer. And then once I finish the answer, just repeat after me. Does that sound good? Son, are you still with me? Uh, yes. Okay, all right, son. I can kind of hear you there, so. All right, son, here we go. So what are some useful items that people often carry with them in their pockets? I believe some useful yes. objects that individuals have with them in their pockets are their wallets, their house keys, and their phones, because these are necessary in daily life. A wallet is needed for purchases. Uh, keys are needed to secure uh, the house or the home, and phones are needed for communication. Uh, just like my mother, when she saw an accident, she immediately got her phone and called the ambulance, which helped save a person's life. Okay, here we go, son. Uh, what are some useful items that people often carry with them in their pockets? Go for it. I believe some useful objects that individuals have with them in their pockets are their wallets, their house keys, their phones, because these are necessary in daily life. A wallet is needed for purchases. The keys are needed to secure the house and phones are needed for communication. Just like my mother, when she saw an accident, she immediately, immediately got her phone and called the ambulance, which saved a person's life. Nice, son, okay? So that's what you want to practice, okay? Now pay attention to your intonation. Make it natural, don't rush, okay? And really enunciate the words. Son, that was a really good um, first volunteer. So thank you so much. Uh, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your weekend in Hanoi. Bye, son. All right. Uh, you too. Thank you, son. All right, I think we had a little bit of a delay there with some, but that was pretty good, okay? So Selena says, nice, good job, yeah. Support each other. Um, learning is best done when you are encouraged and supported, absolutely. So thumbs up for Sun. Okay, Maria Costina, let's try to reach out to our member Maria. I'm not sure if I've ever heard Maria's voice, uh, but we're, we'll soon find out. Okay, Maria, are you ready? Here we go. Hopefully we'll move along nice and steady now and then we'll be able to cover all the questions. Maria is ready. Okay. Hello. Hi, Maria. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Awesome. Maria, I think this is the first time I'm hearing your voice. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, well, it's a pleasure to hear your voice uh, finally. I've seen you in the chat interacting, and that's great. Uh, Maria, may I ask, where are you? Uh, yes, I'm uh, from uh, Romania. Romania, awesome. Um, I have Hungarian roots, so Romania is very close to us, and there's lots of Hungarians living there as well. Um, Maria, why are you taking the IELTS exam? I'm uh, taking the IELTS exam because I want uh, to start uh, the PhD in uh, business administration. Yes, and just like with Son, give detail. So you're giving detail, give a little bit more detail. Automatically, the next question in my mind right now, Maria, is where? So um, you've given me what? Now give me the where. So where are you planning to do that? Well, uh, I'm planning to take it uh, here in uh, Bucharest, Romania. Okay, and you need the IELTS for that locally? Yes. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not actually too surprised because um, for the past few years now, a lot of universities that are not necessarily English universities are also requiring IELTS exams, which makes sense because as a PhD student, you have to be able to present your ideas to the international community, and of course, that's done in English, right? So, um, it's not a surprise. Okay, Maria. Well, I want to help you with that uh, project, so. Uh, let me go back to our syllabus here and um, I will ask you a question. Give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Okay. All right. So, are there any useless things that people often carry around with them? Whenever in my opinion, okay. some uh, useless objects that uh, people carry around are um, especially for um, uh, women. Uh, they uh, take, um, let's say, um, um, their uh, lipstick, their uh, foundation, their concealer, uh, their uh, brushes, their... Uh, um, Praise, um, and I strongly believe that it's not necessary. Uh, you can uh, do this uh, makeup part uh, when uh, you're at home before uh, leaving uh, for your job and not take them with you uh, when uh, you're going um, to your job. And I strongly believe that uh, an, an employer doesn't uh, hire you to go there and do your makeup there. Uh, he hires you to How have items uh, that people consider useful? So I have to interrupt you. I don't want to be rude with you, Maria, especially since it's our first time. But I will tell you this. The examiner at this point will interrupt you. Okay, that's just the okay. reality. They'll, they'll, just, they'll just cut in. And there's a reason for that. They want to ask you more questions to assess your um, speaking. So when students start to ramble, it's called rambling, when we just kind of talk, 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 talk. Like now you're talking about what an employer wants me to do at work and what they don't want me to do. We're not talking about useless objects anymore, right? So as, as soon as the... Um, as soon as the, the examiner feels like you're not really talking about the question anymore, they will cut you and then and then it's awkward because then you're like, oh, what did you just say? Like, I didn't catch the question because I was still thinking and talking. So you don't want that situation, Maria, okay? Okay. So the first tip is definitely just answer and stop. Don't keep talking, otherwise it's going to be a very awkward communication and your score will go down unnecessarily. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me give you some more feedback. So it was kind of, I felt like, you know, this question was a bit challenging for you. Of course, you know, it's your first time, so you're nervous as well. Um, and that's making it a little, a little bit more difficult to uh, think about good ideas for the response, right? Um, it took you a while to start which would cost you for fluency marks. So this answer that you just gave me would be a five to a six. Okay. So it, it's, it would be considered a little bit less than fluent. Um, a five is just under fluent. But I think that your English, you should be scoring at least a seven, Maria, okay? So, mm -hmm. uh, so you need to practice, you need to practice the right strategy. Um, for this one, you're getting a five, closer to a five, I think. Um, you said, in my opinion, some useless objects that people carry around with them, and then you said, especially for women. Um, and you said uh, makeup, and then the reason is because they should be doing their makeup at home and not while they're um, doing their tasks outdoors. Okay, um, visualize. So picture it, okay? Um, when you, so instead of focusing on the examiner and becoming more and more nervous, kind of um, create a mirror and look inward and look at yourself and picture your own life. 
Um, when I think about useless objects in my pocket, I often think about, okay, when I reach into my pocket and pull out items, what are those items that I'm often pulling out that I'm just kind of pulling out and throwing into the garbage, pulling out and throwing into the garbage? So when you think about that, Maria, what items do you often pull out of your pocket that go directly into the garbage? Oh, like a shopping receipt. Yeah, very good. A receipt. I'm always tossing out receipts, right? Why do we, we're killing all these poor trees for useless receipts, right? <laughs> um, yes. So useless receipts. Yeah, we get most of them digitally. You get your bank statement anyway. Those receipts are so often completely useless these days. Yeah, useless receipts. Okay, um, what else do you throw out of your pockets that are just like, Ugh, what is this doing in my pocket? Like a pen. Okay, um, a pen that doesn't work anymore, sure, pen, okay. Um, what else? I know that there's definitely, there are like at least one or two in my head that immediately just jump, like they're like, oh yeah, of course, it's all the time I'm throwing it out of my pocket. So what else? How about a candy wrapper? You ever have candy wrappers that are somehow staying in your pocket way too long and then like after a week you're like, why is this chocolate wrapper still in my pocket? <laughs> All right, so candy wrapper. How about a used tissue? You ever have that happen where you pull out like a used tissue paper or something similar that you've used to blow your nose and you're like, oh, why did I put that into my pocket? Um, right. So um, use tissue paper, right? So there are all kinds of uh, useless items that people hoard around with them in their pockets. A bus yeah. ticket? Bus ticket. Absolutely. Ken in the chat, they're saying napkins from fast food. Yeah. Tatiana says, um, yeah, Iconic says, <laughs> so bus ticket, use bus tickets, right? So there are definitely lots of items that we have. So what you want to do is you just want to stop, visualize and Put yourself in the situation. Usually the questions for all of the speaking, so part one, part two, and part three, they're questions that most of us experience quite often in life. So as long as we're able to stay calm and kind of visualize and focus on ourselves, then we should be able to generate at least two, three kind of good answers for this, right? Okay. All right, so um, what I'm going to do, Maria, is instead of giving you a sentence with these, I think you can do a much better job this time with these items. I'm just going to ask you the question again and then give you a second chance. How does that sound? Uh, yes. Okay, let's do it. So are there any useless things that people often carry around? Uh, some uh, use useless uh, items that uh, people carry around uh, are uh, some uh, useless receipts like a used pen maybe a candy wrapper um, or a used tissue paper or an expired uh, bus ticket and um, uh, whenever you need uh, to pull up uh, your phone or um, uh, your keys from the house, uh, you have the unpleasant surprise that uh, those items shouldn't <laughs> find uh, their way in your uh, pocket. Much better. Okay, that was definitely much closer to a band seven. Absolutely. Now, another really, really important tip, Maria, and this is a tip for everybody because it's a very common mistake amongst people, is the you. And notice how in your first answer, you did this. So you said you can do this to, um, you can do this makeup part when you are at home and when you're leaving for your job. Now, imagine that I'm your examiner, Maria. Um, I'm a guy, I don't really put on makeup. Sometimes when I'm doing video shoots, a little bit but that's about but i usually don't put on makeup so if you're telling me like you're sitting there and you're going like you can put your makeup on at home like are you realizing that you're talking to a guy that's not wearing makeup right um, so it's, it's 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 awkward okay so we want to avoid the you uh kind of pronoun in our discussion okay because it's awkward okay. it's, it makes for awkward communication so instead of the you uh use people or use i 
Okay, so here I, I think the beginning was really good. You said that some items that are not necessary, which people often have in their pockets, are uh, receipts from their shopping, a pen that doesn't work, uh, maybe a candy wrapper or used tissue paper or expired bus ticket. And then make the example personal. You can say like, I'm always uh, throwing these items out of my pocket at the end of the day when I get back home. And I'm often surprised uh, how much of these garbage items there are in my pockets. So make it personal, okay? Or make it general, people, individuals, all right? Okay. All right, Maria, but you're on the right track, okay? So slow it down, visualize. If you need time to visualize, use an expression like, oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, give me a second to think about it. It's okay to say that, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, uh, Maria, so keep practicing that. Avoid using you. As soon as you hear yourself use the word you, stop yourself and correct yourself. Say, I mean people or individuals, okay? Okay. All right. Good job, Maria, and I hope to hear your voice again soon, okay? Of course. <laughs> okay. Bye, Maria. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. All right, that was Maria. Give Maria a thumbs up. That was her first time volunteering, so definitely give some encouragement to uh, Maria. All right, thumbs up. Ken Russell says, how about some promotional perfumes from the mall? Yeah, those can be a surprise, especially if you throw your pants in the washer or dryer. All right. Um, Tatiana has been very patient here. Let's give Tatiana uh, a chance. Okay, Tatiana, are you ready? Tatiana says, ready as I'll ever be, but I do want to make sure, Tatiana, that you are still here and listening, paying attention to us. So, uh, Eddie, I see you there as well. Stay in the queue. I'll be circling to you in a, just a moment here. So we're moving along nicely. Okay, so some really important tips, students, visualize, okay? Don't use you in your answers. Um, draw from real life, think about your daily activities, think about common situations. These are very important tips. Don't forget about the items um, and the responses that you thought of in um, part two, right? Uh, Tatiana, still waiting to see if you're there. I see you in the chat, Tatiana, but it's like you're kind of paying attention more to the chat than what I'm saying here, uh, Tatiana. And I'm asking, okay, you know what, Tatiana, I'm just gonna call you because I can see that you're there, but maybe you're, maybe I need to just, just here we go. Let me just see if I can cold call and distract you. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Tatiana. How are you? Uh, a little bit sick, but nothing serious. I'm ready to, to answer your question. Okay. Um, uh, if you're feeling like you've got the flu a little bit, one really good trick that I have for that is grapefruit seed extract. It's a natural remedy. You mix it with orange juice. Grapefruit. Yeah, yeah it's grapefruit huh? seed extract seed. so it's the mm -hmm. oil they take from the ah, seed yes, yes, of the grapefruit it's, yeah. yeah you mix it with orange juice drink a cup of that and you might just be fine the next day all right um that's some health yes. tips health mm -hmm. tips from adrian um okay, okay. <laughs> all right <laughs> i'll follow your advice <laughs> all right so it's a, it's a very powerful uh uh, immune booster. Um, okay, Tatiana, so let me just uh -huh. jump to the questions here and um, and then give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Here uh -huh. we go. How have items that people consider useful to have on their person changed from a generation before? Could you please switch to the uh, to the question? Mm -hmm. uh. I'll repeat. Okay. okay, so I'll repeat it one more time. I just how have items that people consider useful to have on their person changed from a generation before? Uh, I think that uh, item, uh, object that people used to believe uh, 
to be very uh, useful have changed greatly from the previous times uh, these items have become smaller uh, and portable uh, also they have changed uh, in, 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 in terms of purpose uh, people used to carry uh, phone books with them uh, to be able to um, call their acquaintances from uh, phone boxes but now uh, instead of that people use uh, people carry uh, smartphones with them also instead of big wallets with lots of banknotes and coins uh, people use flat and uh, small uh, debit cards in their card holders uh, and I'm not an exception. Uh, I have a smartphone and a card holder instead of a wallet that I used to carry with me like 20 years ago. Nice, beautiful. That's a great answer, Tatiana. Thank you very you much. Through it. Mm. Um, so that would be like a band aid, okay? You really gave a good answer, explanation, example there. Um, it it took you a, a moment to kind of steer your thoughts onto the... I just didn't think the screen. I just didn't see the screen. Now, uh, Tatiana, bad news. You, you don't get to see any kind of screen in the real exam Ow. either. Okay. <laughs> Thank so, you for warning. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I hope everybody realizes that when you're looking at the screen and you're reading the question, that's a lot of extra help because in the real exam, uh -huh. there's no looking at questions. So yeah, um, I it's just... About that. It's just audio, right? You spoiled just, us. Yeah, I am. It's 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 uh, it's an unfair advantage. Um, so what you know when you're doing this, and Tatiana, you know, you come back and you volunteer regularly, which is it's great. Uh, do try to do it first, just from hearing me ask you the question instead of actually reading the question. Okay. So okay. it's important to do that, especially at your level. It's important to do that. Now, if you don't catch the question the first time ask for it to be repeated. So especially in part three, once or twice, absolutely okay. Uh -huh. So you can say, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm nervous, I didn't catch it, could you repeat that? And the examiner, especially with someone who has a band seven or eight level communication, they will gladly repeat it. So they will say, yes, how have items that people consider useful to have on their person changed from a generation before? And then you're like, oh, okay, I, you'll get it. Okay, so okay. ask okay. for it to be repeated, but uh -huh. there's there's no reading. So if you say to the examiner, yeah. may, I, may I see the question? <laughs> They'll be like, um, no, you can't. So, of course, um, it was funny. Yeah, so uh, I was kind of smiling there. But um, okay, and then your answer, you said, I think that object, and you were a little bit slow to start because I could feel like you were really trying to paraphrase the question elements don't slow yourself down purposefully to paraphrase if it's slowing you down then just use the question as is so while the items that people consider to be useful have changed a lot so use the question more directly uh, you'll have time to paraphrase more afterwards so don't don't slow down just to force the paraphrasing okay mm -hmm. Um, and then you started to give an explanation before you gave an answer. So you said the items have become smaller. By the way, beautiful use of the present perfect. So you really paid attention to reflecting present perfect. That was really good. Um, so you said have become smaller and uh, more portable. Okay. And I was like, okay, but what are you talking about? Like, are you talking about, you know, communication device or... Um, you know, uh, money. And then you started to give the answer. You said like people used to carry around and you said phone books, which I kind of smiled inside when you said that um, because yeah. I visualized somebody carrying like, <laughs> like a big, especially, you know, like if you're in Moscow or Vancouver, you've got a pretty big phone book. So <laughs> if you're carrying that around, you're going to need a backpack. Um, uh, I don't think we would say phone books. I would say like an organizer. Okay, uh -huh. or a contact, like a notebook or something, but not not really a, so much a contact book. Yeah, reference really a, book. Yeah, not really a phone book, um, but but it was okay. The 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 examiner is not going to judge you so much for that. Yes, yeah, some kind of a phone book, sure. And then you said, but these days people carry around smartphones with them. And then you said, I'm no exception. Um, I have a mobile phone in my pocket. So that was a really good finish. It was it was the middle and the ending that proved to me that you're deserving of that band eight. Okay, so that was really good. Um, all right, 
So big tip here, uh, don't force the paraphrase, start a little bit faster um, when possible, okay? Um, also careful with uh, using an explanation before giving an answer. It is a possible strategy, but it can be trickier, so careful with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, overall, very good. Do you have a question for me? Uh, yes, I on? have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a typo or uh, in what connection there is uh, in front of the person? Um, useful to have on the person things that people consider useful to have on the person. Yeah, um, so in the question, yeah, very nice. Yeah, uh -huh. it's uh, English vocabulary, grammar. Uh, it's very tricky, right? Um, if uh, anybody studies linguistics uh, and looks at English, um, it's quite funny because you have the book of rules of English grammar and it's like that. And then you have the exceptions to the rules of English grammar and it's like a book that's three times bigger. Um, so we've got all kinds of strange and interesting things going on with English grammar. This is an okay grammar. There's nothing wrong here. Um, so how have items that people consider mm -hmm. useful to have on their person? Their person. Yeah, and their here indicates plural people. So On them. Um, on them is okay. Their person is like a synonym for them in this case. Mm, okay, it's new to me. Thank you. Yeah, and you might see it like this on their persons, uh, like that. You might see it as plural, but it's okay both ways. Notice how even Microsoft Word is not underlining. It's it's mm -hmm. it's saying that hey, yeah, if you want to say person, it's okay. If you're saying persons, and I do have grammar check going, it's still saying it's okay. And uh, Grammarly will say the same because it's a form that shows that it's multiple individuals. So on their person, on their persons. Uh, these are expressions meaning multiple people. Okay? Mm -hmm. I see. Does that I make sense? Now. Yeah, um, it sounds, sounds weird, but I'll get used to it. It does. It's one of those. It's kind of one of those ones that are, that are awkward. But um, what you can do after the class, Tatiana, is you can Google it. And I'm sure you'll find some yeah, interesting explanations. They'll be like, yes, this is used for indi uh, indicating multiple individuals in the language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good okay. question. Yeah. Um, all right, Tatiana, thank you for volunteering. Thank you, thank you for the question. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you feel better. Thank you. The same to you. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye, Tatiana. All right. Uh, give Tatiana a thumbs up. That was really good. Some really good questions there as well. Okay. Eddie is still with us. Let's see if we can reach out to Eddie. Eddie says, I want to volunteer. Okay, Eddie, are you ready? I told you I'd circle back to you. I'm a man of my word. All right. Let's go for another question with Eddie. Eddie is ready. Anxiously waiting. Awesome. Eddie is actually in the name of my uncle. Hi, Eddie. Hi. How are you? Great, great. Awesome. Um, Eddie, mute YouTube so that you're not getting feedback into your great. microphone. So just okay. click the, the mute button on YouTube and then we won't hear that feedback. Okay? Sure. Yeah, All right. sure. Yeah. Awesome. Eddie, uh, where are you in our big, wide world today? I live in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Capital of Indonesia, nice. Okay, awesome. And why are you doing the IELTS exam? Yeah, I want to pursue my uh, degree, my uh, higher degree in Australia. Yeah, it is a PhD degree. What major? Uh, uh, data science. Can you be more specific? Uh, it is about the data, how to deal with the analytic, uh, how you can reap the benefit of uh, the big data that you have nowadays. Okay. So data analysis, logistics, um, statistics. All right. Sounds yep. good. Yep. Okay. All right, interesting. Um, let's go to a part three question and um, give me a nice full sentence answer. Okay. All right. So um, here we go. In what situations should people pay extra attention to make sure that they carry with them certain useful possessions? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, in general, uh, maybe people should uh, give more attention to the, the occasion that uh, essential for their life. For example, in the future, their future. Uh, first, uh, let's say uh, you are uh, in the way to propose your your future wife, for example. And then you have to not forget your r ring. Yeah, uh, when you want to propose your future wife, you have to bring your ring, right? Okay, that's one example. All right. Um, okay. Not bad. Um, <laughs> I hope that never happened to you, by the way. <laughs> Where's the ring? Oh, oops. Because um, right? I said before that you have to think about your own life and your own situations. Um, so yeah, definitely do not forget the ring. By the way, what is that ring called? That ring has a special name. Um, do you know what that ring is called? Mm, I have no idea starts with an E. If I say it, you'll probably be like, oh yeah, of course. So the ring that you give at the wedding is called a wedding ring. The ring that you give to the woman uh, before the wedding to say that you would like to take it, her as your wife is called a? Engagement, engagement ring? That's right. Yeah, engagement ring. Yeah, Risa Corp uh, is saying it there in uh, the chat, a couple other people. Um, yeah, um, that gives you lexical resource marks, right? So when you say engagement ring, I can give you a band eight instead of a band six because engagement ring is significantly more specific than just saying mm -hmm. ring, okay? Mm -hmm. So engagement ring. Yeah, now, um, two important corrections here, okay, uh, Eddie. One, um, try to think simple. So this situation of forgetting an engagement ring when a person is proposing to their future wife, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm impressed. That's a unique situation, and I probably would not have thought of that as my first kind of idea. Um, what are some other situations, uh, except for proposing to our wife, where you know we're in a life-changing kind of potentially life-changing event or something that impacts our life quite a bit, and we need to remember to have certain items with us? So, what other situations come to mind? I think there are a couple other Maybe easier ones. Maybe when mm -hmm. you have an... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe when you uh, have an exam. An exam. And you need to bring your pencil. Okay. Yeah. So examination. Sure. What else? Give me a couple more. There's, there should be more. Um, I always say this to students. Like for part three questions, even though they might sound tricky, there's always two or three quick, simple ideas if you really just let loose and kind of let yourself think about those common situations. So yeah, an exam, I would say an exam is more common because we only propose once in our lives. So yeah, engagement ring would be the trickier one to think of. I think there are some easier concepts. Exam is one. What is another one? You might actually see some help there um, in the chat if you take a peek. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you want to go to a supermarket, you, you should not forget your wallet. Shopping, right? We talked about that. That was in part two, right? So going shopping, definitely a good idea to remember your wallet. Okay, so exam, not forgetting your pencil uh, or your notes. Shopping, not forgetting your wallet so that you can pay. What else? Yeah, going abroad, you should not Travel. forget your passport. Mm -hmm. Passport, yeah, absolutely. Traveling, passport, that one came to my mind quite quickly. Uh, definitely, okay. Um, anything else? When you're going to work? Um, when you're driving, you should. Mm -hmm. Driving, yeah. Your license, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, or when you're yeah. going to work, probably don't forget your keys. Otherwise, it might be a bit of a headache. Okay, so exam, pencil, shopping, wallet, travel, passport, driving, license, work, keys. All right, try this sentence one more time, Eddie, and this time don't say you, OK? 
Okay, notice everyone how it's really difficult. I think you're the third person or maybe even the fourth person today who's saying you in their answer. Try not to use the word you. Say people or individuals or students when you go to the exam or truck drivers like Ken was saying when they drive their truck, right? Um, tourists when they travel. So use better words, okay? Uh, let me ask the question one more time. Use these ideas. Give me a nice full sentence answer. Sounds good? Okay. All right, here we go. Um, in what situations should people pay extra attention to make sure that they carry with them certain useful possessions? Um, people should not forget to bring uh, this essential object uh, when uh, when they have an important occasions, for example, having an examination, uh, students should not forget to bring uh, their pencil and pens. And uh, for uh, people who want to buy uh, things um, in the supermarket, they sh for for shopping, they should not forget to bring their uh, their uh, wallet and uh, for people who go traveling they should not forget their passport and uh, for people uh, who want to uh, drive uh, a car they should not forget their driving license of course and the last one uh, if they, if people want to go to office, they should not forget that they are keys. Okay, very good. So that was a bit of an overkill. I would probably would have stopped at number three, um, <laughs> <laughs> traveling and passport. And the examiner might actually interrupt you at that point, right? So they, they'll be like, okay, this person obviously has a lot of ideas of when not to forget certain <laughs> objects. So two or three is enough, but for the example's sake, right? Just to show people that there are lots of ideas. It's not just a, an engagement ring when you're proposing. Definitely don't forget that. Otherwise, the answer might be a no. Um, <laughs> I'm not marrying this uh, forgetful person. Um, so uh, yeah, so two or three are absolutely enough. Um, but again, you know, just keep your thoughts open and, and think about general uh, situations and you did a good job there okay and notice how when you avoided you uh, you came up with much better words like students and so forth so that was really good mm -hmm. um, don't use the word things either so when people go shopping to buy mm -hmm. merchandise or to buy goods instead of the word things okay mm -hmm. All right, Eddie, uh, thank you for volunteering and uh, I appreciate you staying up uh, late and uh, studying and I hope you have a good rest tonight and a great rest of your weekend. So, so thank you, thank you so much. Bye. You're very welcome. Bye, Eddie. Okay, that was Eddie um, halfway across the world from me. Uh, thumbs up, Eddie. Okay, so uh, some really important tips and advice, right? Avoid the pronouns you, keep your thoughts simple, give answers, explanations, examples in that order. It's the best. Connect your ideas, okay? So connect your ideas, use good connections. Um, students, I am going to stop there for now, but I encourage you to keep going and to keep practicing with each other using the website. So using aehelp.com um, if you like our website and you want some of the best um, IELTS preparation online use our premium IELTS course it doesn't cost a lot of money you pay once it's lifetime access we even have that discount code uh, perfect nine to get um, that 20% uh, discount and in Canada it costs $59 US but in some countries like Vietnam it's $25 US I think in Russia it's uh, 
49 so it changes depending on the economy of the country so we make it uh, available accessible to everyone general IELTS click that big red button to join our premium package I'm coming back on Thursday with speaking part one so remember what I said that our live class schedules are changing live classes will now be on Thursdays Fridays Saturdays and they will be longer classes to give more opportunities for students to interact and to practice learn from each other so I will post the schedule uh, after this class on YouTube and on Instagram Instagram is IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help so make sure to check us out there get our apps academic IELTS help and general IELTS help thank you members and viewers for your support for your participation thank you Eugene for those lovely emojis, the confetti emoji especially is one that's, uh, you know, indicating a fun and festive weekend for everyone. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. Much love to all of you wherever you are in our wonderful world. Bye for now, everyone.